What's going on, guys? This is Jane Joku, the sneaker principal. And um, I finally built the courage to talk about this guy right here. I don't know if I can get this to focus. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, Canon RP. So what you're looking at right here is the Leica M11P. I've been wanting to make this video for a while now and my struggle has been, how do I make a video about a camera that seems to be so niche in the fact that every video I've ever watched has, has been primarily above middle aged white men with the resources to have this as their walk around camera. But then also speak of this as an item, a tool, a reality that speaks about a time well before my existence. When we talk about like we're talking about going decades back to when some of the most amazing photographers on the planet had this as a manual, fully manual film camera or capture, capture images that I would eventually, as I was coming up, see in picture books, you know. Like right now I'm looking at this book, this is Gordon, Gordon Parks right here. And it's a uh, photo file. Look at this, I'm looking at these black and white images and I'm just thinking to myself like, like, how did that happen? You know, how did that happen? You know, how did this happen? But so well focused and looking at an image that allows me to kind of try, that allows me to ask a question like, what am I seeing here? Why am, why am I seeing this? Now look at this picture right here. It's, it's a middle-aged woman, black woman, sitting on her bed or on someone's bed, reflected off a mirror. But next to the mirror is a picture of Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt on the wall. So it, tell, it gives me, hopefully, a time frame of when this picture was taken, or at least some level of connection to Roosevelt, but it gives me an era. But even more fascinating is how are these pictures taken in a world where we freak out about exposure, we freak out about ISO, we freak out about focus, and we have cameras like this. This is a Canon R6. That is Mach 2, which is an amazing camera. With one of these lenses, let's say the um, this is a um, 24 to 70, you know, um, RF lens on here. You can get some amazing, amazing pictures with some level of sweat equity in the beginning as you're trying to understand the system. But once you understand it and know you know halfway what you're doing. The camera does the rest of it for you. But these photographers, like a Gordon Parks, didn't have an autofocus system like that. Didn't have computers in the camera itself. They s sat there, looked at an image and say, how do I capture this? How do I put the right settings in there? Because I'm not going to be able to see what is captured what photograph that I made until it's developed, until I develop it. And it was usually something like this. The only difference is that this here is a digital camera. Screen in the back, right? But it is so different from, so different from this. So different from this. This video is not about specs because I've watched all the videos about specs. So 
me repeating what I've heard in other videos is just a waste of time, honestly. And plus, if you're looking to me for specs, I'm the wrong one. But if you're looking to me for an opinion, a perspective, I can give you that. So the thing with the Leica, the thing with this, this camera right here is that off the bat, the fact that it gives me the options of making decisions by turning, turning dials and saying, okay, I'm going to choose this particular shutter speed. I'm going to choose this particular ISO. I know what my limitations are. Um, and if I want to, I could have this turned off the whole entire time. I know, I've heard about people who put tape on the backs to prevent them from looking at the images they've taken, but they want to wait until after the fact, which I think is kind of wild and awesome. But the thing about this is I mean, when I'm in a space where I'm taking pictures, capture, when I'm making pictures, I am, and again, I have to tell you, I love the concept of, of making versus taking. Because you're making something rather than taking it from somebody else, right? When I'm making pictures, sometimes I'm, I'm in a space where I don't have the, 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 the time to, to check. So I hope that I made the right decisions, especially if I'm doing a zone focusing. I'm hoping that that zone of, of approximation of what's in focus works out. I go back after maybe three or four or five or 10 shots and look back and say, how did I do? And then I get to either be bummed out or be like, yes, I did that. But the greatest thing about it is we know there's the, there's the triangle of knowledge. That's what I call it, a triangle of knowledge. If I tell my students, um, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. If you can balance those three things out, there's a fourth exposure, but exposure can be played with. It's almost like the icing on the cake. This camera requires that I make a decision about all those three and four things. And there is no autofocus, you know? This is a range finder, which means when I look through the viewfinder, there is a box in there. I, like I see everything, you know? I see the whole entire image, right? But then there's a little box in the middle, a little box in the middle where I see something, but it's doubled up. Like if I'm like I'm looking at myself right now and this imagine me, but it's a double vision of me, right? And the rangefinder says you have to now align both images to until you see one. And that's how you get focus. What's amazing is that the range, there's a range in which you can be in focus. Not model focus. Okay. There's a range that you can be in focus. Okay, within which you can catch focus. And this camera asks me to make that determination and I can go anywhere from as close as under half half a foot to 15 feet and to infinity 15 feet I can still get focus beyond infinity is me just saying I hope that what I'm looking at is beyond 15 feet and it's enough, far enough for me to catch the best focus possible. I know I sound like I'm speaking French. This video is not for you, for you guys who are brand new to this and you're like, oh my God, you know, I need to, I need to uh, learn the basics. No, this is video for people who are already doing this and you're like, wow, there's something amazing about this that's making me think, think beyond what is, what has been my norm. So when I bought, when I purchased this camera, I got the body, the M11P. Um, and again, I wanted to see, make an investment in my ability to really think through the process of making a picture. Then I bought this lens, the 28, thought about the 35, thought about 50, um, th thought about what level of Leica lens to get. And I chose Summicron M F2 28 millimeter. Why the 28? Because um, <clears throat> it gives me enough of a range to catch a wide perspective of things. 
but also it forces me to have courage to walk up on a thing and um, or, or a person or even better yet to have the conversation to say hey I would love to take your picture but however this is not a normal camera with a telephoto lens that I can zoom in and out I gotta come closer or farther away but the other thing too because this has 60 megapixels I don't have to be that close I don't have to be all up on you. I don't have to do all this to your face. I can be in a range that's comfortable enough and I just frame it to know that I want to not make you feel uncomfortable. So I'm in a range where I can take this back because of the 60 megapixels, I can now crop it and make you bigger in filling the frame, the composition of what my original intent is. But the other thing that's cool about this is that there's magnifications that mimics 35 and 50 based on a 1.5 and 1.8 crop. Which at first I was like, hmm, I don't know about that. I'm going to lose resolution. But guess what? I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I did lose resolution. But if you come from 60 going down to, let's say, 12. There's so much data right there that you can grab incredible images. But let me tell you something about this amazing tool, like a camera, Wetzlar, Germany. I prefer taking pictures in black and white. Yes, there is a monochrome version of this where the camera only does black and white. But I was like, ah, what if? I needed to get a feel, <laughs> something that had to be in color, at least my perception of color, then I'd be stuck with a camera that's only doing black and white. So I chose this, even though I know with the monochrome, the black and white is so much better. But however, it's not the camera, it is not the paintbrush, it is the artist. And I know I'm, I'm probably, probably sounding very egotistical by saying that, but however, the one thing about the Leica is that it is an amazing tool, amazing paintbrush. And um, the great thing about the paintbrush is that it can be in the hand of an amateur or it can be in the hand of a master, but every amateur is working towards becoming a master, hopefully. And every master once was once an amateur. So in my hands, I feel like I have a superpower. So um, what I'm gonna do is, at the end of this video, I'm just gonna share with you some of the images I've taken so far. I am an amateur in all sense of the word, but I'll tell you this, after spending time manually thinking about my aperture, about my, my um, shutter speed, in my ISO, when I've had to pick pick up one of my cannons, what happens is I kind of know what I want to get. So I set it up, test shots, and I go. And I realize my camera set in manual. Hmm. And because I I am learning and I'm getting comfortable with manual. On the Leica, manual on this feels automatic, but the automatic is really me. Understanding what's happening when I put numbers, those numbers together, and when I triangulate those numbers to get the shot or shots that I want. All right, y'all. That's me just rambling on about my Leica MP with the um, Sumocron F2 28 millimeter lens. And I'll tell you this, I've learned so much. Maybe next time we'll talk about fo zone focusing and how I use that. And, um, but for right now, I wanna stop. Here's some images that I've taken over the past couple of months. I hope you like them. All right, be well.